What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at the speed dial button for Kivi MD and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at the speed dial button for Kivi MD. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at the speed dial button, and that's this little round button down here. You click it, spins a little bit, things come up, we can click on them, different things happen when we click on them. We can have different colors and text and icons and all that good stuff in there. And so that's what we're going to look at in this video. So head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code for this video in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other KVMD and KV videos. There's like, I don't know, over 50 or so by now, somewhere around there. So check those out if you haven't so far. So, all right, I've got two files here. SD.py stands for speed dial, I guess. And SD.KV is our KV file. And the Python file is the same file we always have starting out. I've set the theme of our app to dark and blue gray. We've had these same colors throughout this playlist. And we've got our builder pointed to sd.kv, which is this kv file right here. So I've just got a basic box layout set, and we're going to set the orientation to vertical. So let's build this thing out. It's actually pretty easy to use the speed dial. Uh, there's a lot of different options we'll look at, but the actual implementation is pretty easy. So I'm just going to create an MD screen here. And inside of here, let's create a label because we want to be able to click on the button and have it do stuff. So we'll change the label as we click on the button. That's an easy thing. So let's go MD label. And I'm just going to call, give this an ID of my underscore label. And then let's give this a text right off the bat of just, you know, some stuff. There we go. And let's H align this in uh, center, just put it at the center of the screen. So, okay, that'll create a little basic label. So now, in order to use the speed dial thing, the little round button with a plus in it, so that is an MD floating, right, action, button, speed, dial. And that is a mouthful. So MD floating, action, button, speed, dial. And the capitalization is important. So these two are capitalized, and then every word, floating, action, button, speed, and dial are all capitalized. Now, speed dial to me is one word. Apparently, it's two words. I don't know. <laughs> so there we go. All right. So let's give this a data of app uh, dot data. And the data here, that's the actual buttons and the icons and the text and stuff for the speed dial. So we'll talk about that in just a second. So we also want to give this a root underscore button underscore animation and set that equal to true. And we'll play around with that and see what that is in just a second. So, okay. Now we could do this several different ways. We can do our data right here. We could call data and then create a Python dictionary with the icon and the text like this, and then comma, the next one the next one and on and on. But this is going to stretch this all out very far here. And you can't do these on separate lines. And this makes this all unruly. So instead of doing it here, let's go ahead and do Let's just save this and do this over in the Python file itself much easier to do it here. So we can come in our main app here. And just anywhere inside of here, right up here, if we wanted to, we'll just set the data. And like I said, this is going to be a Python dictionary. And here we can put these on separate lines. So this would be much easier. So here, we just want to grab whatever icon we want. I'm going to use language dash Python. And then this, these are key value pairs. So this will be the actual text itself. So the key is the, the icon you want to use. And the value is the text that shows up. And remember, we looked at these icons in the last video. I showed you a uh, a reference, uh, I show you a website that has most of the icons. That website doesn't actually have all the icons. So if we go to uh, Kivi MD icons, uh, let's see, that works. There's a website. Hey, look, it's me. <laughs> uh, let's see, where is it? Actually, what we want is not Kivi MD icons. Let's go material design icons. Remember, Kivi MD is a fork of material design. So we can just go to the material design icon, and that's right here. And here we can search for anything we want. This just lists them. That's not useful. But we can come up here and type in language dash 
and then that will give us a bunch of languages. And here you see we've got Python, we've got Ruby, we've got Rails, it looks like CSS, C Sharp, C++, C, HTML, JavaScript, PHP. So we can use these icons or any icons wherever you find them, but let's go ahead and use these. So that's where I got this. Check out this website, Material Design icons.com it's sort of useful but in the meantime let's just rough this out i'll just put in a few here let's go language dash ruby and we want this to say ruby and separate each of these with commas as you do with any python list and let's go language dash um, i don't know javascript and let's set that equal to js and so okay that's good we'll just do three that's fine so okay let's go ahead and save this save this head back over to our terminal Notice I'm in the CKBMD directory that we've been using all this time. I've got my virtual environment turned on. And so now let's just run Python sd.py, speeddial.py. And when we do, we see there's our some stuff label. We can click on this, it boom, it goes up. The little X turns to, the little plus sign turns to an X when we click on it. And we've got our icons and our text. So here's the icon, here's the text. Now, when we click on these things, nothing actually happens. So, all right, first things first, let's click on this and notice the little plus sign spins. If we head back over here and go to our SD or go to our Kiwi file here, we set this root animation. Let's set this to false. And let's just see what difference this makes. I like to play around with each of these things and see what little changes makes. So you see now it doesn't actually spin. It just goes straight up. I and mean, the little plus sign doesn't spin to an X. So, okay, whatever. If you like that, maybe you have it like that. I love animation, so I'm going to set this back to true. So, okay, so we've got this thing. It, it basically works, and it was just as easy as calling data, app.data, and then over here defining which icons we want to pop up. So before we get into the functionality of, like, clicking on this thing, let's go over very quickly some of the options, and there's a bunch of them here for color stuff. So let's go color stuff. And so we can change the label underscore text underscore color. And you just use the Kiwi color scheme that we always use. You know, you pick those four numbers. So this would be red, uh, red, green. The first one is red. The next one is green, blue, and then a transparency level. So I'm just going to set this to red and see what this does. So if we run this, now we click on this. And so the text inside of here becomes red, right? So that's how you change the text. So let's just go uh, text color, right? So I'm going to comment all these out. I'll leave them in here in the code if you want to reference these back, but I don't want to change them because they're each going to do a thing. And so we want to look at them one at a time. We can also go BG underscore color underscore stack underscore button. And let's set that equal to red as well. So if we save this, and run it. Now the icon buttons themselves change color. So that changes the background of the icon. So let's go BG of icon. Okay, so that's how you change that. We also have now BG underscore color underscore root underscore button. And if we want to change this to red, and you can change this to any color you want, obviously using the color scheme that you know how to use. If you don't, check the playlist. We've got a couple of videos on colors and how to pick very precise, specific colors. So I'm just doing red because it's super easy, even though it's ugly. And here, the actual speed dial button itself, the background changes. So that's cool. So let's let's say uh, speed dial BG. Okay. We also have the color underscore icon underscore root underscore button, and the, you notice it changes a little bit. We've been doing the BG stuff, now it's just plain old color. So if we change this to red, save this, give it a run, boom, boom. We notice that the speed dial text is red now, right? A little plus sign is red. So that's cool. That is the speed dial text color. All right, so, and let's see, one more maybe, color underscore icon underscore stack underscore button, and we'll change this to 
red as well. Save this, run it. Now we have the actual text. Well, it's, it's called the icon text color. So it's not the background of the icon, it's the text color itself. So this is red instead of white. So that's interesting. So let's say uh, icon text color, I don't know, whatever. Now there's one more, I'll show it to you, but this isn't actually gonna do much. This is the BG underscore hint underscore color. And if we set this to red, you'll notice if we run this and we click this, nothing really looks like it happens, except for when it's expanding, it kind of looks like it's red. See that? The icon backgrounds. Now, the reason why I think it's doing that is because our Python file itself is setting this blue gray as the primary palette. So that primary palette is kind of overriding this. But if you're not using that sort of thing, you could use this to change the uh, icon background color. All right, so, okay, that's a bunch of color stuff. It's pretty interesting. You're probably gonna wanna do things like that. Now, the more interesting stuff is pushing the buttons, All right? So to do that, we wanna call callback and we wanna set this to app.callback. Now this is whenever we click on one of those icons. And we're gonna do a couple of different click things, but this is the first thing I wanna look at. So now we just head over to our Python file and inside of here somewhere, we just want to define callback. And we wanna pass in self, we also wanna pass in instance. And the instance is the thing we're clicking on basically, right? So if we wanna just change our, remember we have a label up here, and we put this as my label, the ID for this. So we could just change that in the way that we've always done before. We can go self dot root dot IDS IDs. The ID we gave was my label and we can set the text equal to, let's create an F string and let's say you, you pressed and then we want to say instance dot icon. And this will tell us which icon we pressed. So go ahead and save this. Let's run this guy. So if we click on Python, it says you pressed language Python, which is of course, pull it up, the icon we designated there. So it's not doing text, but this will allow you to do any sort of logic that you want. If you know which icon is being pressed, you can use that to do anything you want. So for instance, if we don't, if we want to do something else, you know, let's go, let's create a, Let's do a basic if statement. Let's say if instance dot icon equals language Python, then let's create a variable called lang and let's just set that equal to Python or whatever you want, right? We can then go l if instance dot icon equals, let's see, language JavaScript, then lang is gonna be JS, let's just say. And let's just copy this whole thing again. And let's see, what was the other one? Ruby. So we change this to Ruby. And right here, Ruby. So now inside of here, instead of saying you pressed instance icon, we could just press, say you press Lang. All right, so if we save this, go ahead and run it. Just the same kind of way to do, it's just a different way to do the sort of same thing. So now instead of saying language Python, it just says Python, right? So you can do something like that or anything you want. That if statement can be modified to do anything. You wanna open another window, you wanna resize the screen, you wanna run a different function or program or anything, you can put it in that if statement that we just created. Now let me pull it back up right here. Instead of just setting this variable to something, you can do anything you want in here. And, but that's how you could reference based on the icon that's pressed. So very cool and very easy. So the last thing I want to look at is, let's see, let's run this guy one more time. What happens when we actually click this button? Maybe we want something else to happen in our program whenever we click to open this or click to close it, right? Maybe we don't care what's being clicked in here. Maybe we just want to know whether or not it's been opened or closed. So how do we do that? Very easy. We just come back over here into our Kiwi file and let's say uh, open or close. So here we can just call on underscore open 
and then just call app.open. Or we could go on underscore close and call app.close. So these will call these two functions whenever the little button is pressed at the bottom, the plus sign, to open it or close it. So here we just have to come back and create these functions. So we can come over here and let's say uh, open. Here we just define open and we want to pass in self, right? And so here, let's just change this label like we did earlier. Instead of saying you pressed something, we'll just say open, right? Exclamation point. It's very exciting opening things, right? So same thing with close. We can close it and we can just define close, pass in self, always pass in self. And again, let me just kind of copy this dude right here. And instead of open, we want to close with three exclamation points. That's even more exciting. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So save this, run it. Now, when we click open, boom, it says open. We click it again to close. It says close. Now, when we still click one of these or any of these, it still does its own thing. But now we have an open and a close function that we can reference if we need to. You might not need to, but that's how you do it. It's pretty simple. So that is the speed dial thing. I think I went through pretty much everything you would need for this, changing colors, clicking on and opening and closing it. Pretty simple and uh, really useful. And it's a very common sort of design element you see in a lot of apps. You see this little thing down here, you click it, options happen. It's great for menus. It's great for all kinds of different things and uh, really easy to do. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. So it pays $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.